for many years, soldiers have fought in the jungle, where there is always a war of nerves and terror, where there are no towns for shelter, few maps and few certain roads. Yet, even in the jungle, the cool logic of life must be argued out. For some, it was the logic of maneuver, reconnaissance, and patrol. There were eight of us on this job, all Marines, you know. There was Smudge, looked a lot different in the jungle, what he did when he used to be traveling in calendars and greeting cards, and Darky, the left-handed bloke. Wonderful shot he was too. There was Paddy with his beard and his Bren gun. And Butch. Been in the mob years. Then Spot came along. Of course I was in charge of the outfit. And Knocker was second in command. I had a bit of an argument with him. About where we were going to leave the track. The jungle's mostly like the sea. No landmarks, you know. Reminds me. I'd forgotten to mention young Denny. I was a bit bothered about taking him. He was only a kid, really. But he stuck it out with the best of us. It must have been after midday when we dived into the undergrowth. I reckon we'd better do a mile before we made Bibby for the night. A mile's about four hours hard going. It's like trying to fight your way through a barbed wire entanglement in a steam laundry. Something horrible, like nothing you've ever been through before, and hope never will again. You've got to watch out you don't get separated from the others. You could get lost in five seconds, and if you drag behind, they're likely to find yourself slightly dead. It turned out we had not gone astray, so I decided we'd better think of keeping down for the night. I didn't like the pool that was nearby. Too many crocodiles and mozzies. So we moved on a little bit and got fixed up a treat. Even organized a fire to brew a drop of char. There's a trick way of doing it, you know. So the smoke travels up a tree trunk and doesn't blow around. Before we settled down for the night, we arranged a sort of silent intercom system, and we had a code. Different number of tugs meant different things. Lengths of jungle vine tied to our ankles. If the sentry saw anything suspicious, a good pull, and you'd be awake without a word being said. Of course, it didn't do to pull too hard. Paddy had me over like that once. What I said was nobody's business. And did we learn to hide ourselves away in that jungle? Quite early the next day, we had to cross a couple of miles of paddy fields. You have to keep clear of the skyline. You stumble into the furrows and the buffalo tracks under the water, and it's a fight to keep your weapons dry. Of course, we collected a ruddy herd of leeches. They work their way all over you. Amongst your clothes, inside your boots, down your neck, nothing keeps them out. And it's a startler when you see the amount of blood they suck out of you. And if you try to pull them off, the head stays behind. Butch caught one having a suck at his marine globe and laurel, which comes of being a regular. We were given a lot for a long rest, but we had to get cracking again, and on we plodded and no little pub waiting at the end of the day's hiking. I knew there should be a village nearby, so me and Knocker had another little conference and decided to split into two parties to do a recce from different sides. It looked the ordinary little jungle village, tucked away on its own, with Jap a million miles away. But I couldn't be certain. We were pretty done up and needed a proper meal but often Jap had blokes posted in places like this. I watched for a long time, and it was hard to decide. 
In the end, I was fairly certain there were no Japs about, so I thought I'd chance it. The bloke was a bit shaken when he looked down and saw me standing there. With the odd words of the lingo I'd picked up, and lots of sign language, I tried to explain that I wanted him to rustle up some grub for eight men. Someone had to stay on guard, of course, and it was Spot's turn, which made him chocker. A hungry type is Spot. He can't bear to wait for his food. The villagers did us proud. Fruit and veg and those little peppery sort of patties they had. All sorts of stuff. posted sentries and kept watch for us himself. And I was able to get a good sleep with nothing to worry about. I'll always remember that evening and that village, meeting friendliness where you expected to find only enemies. At the other side of the village was a river, and the other side of the river was enemy territory. We rigged up a boat of our ground sheets, lashed over a bamboo frame, and crossed before the sun rose, quietly, not speaking. same hard going as on the other side. But now there were other things to think of than the hard going. Before, there'd always been a chance of a Jap patrol. We'd always been on the alert. But now we were on their own ground. We only knew that the objective had been occupied by the Japs. We didn't know the lie of the land, or what forces were in possession. It was our job to find out, quietly, without any shooting. It wasn't until after midday that we met our first sign of the enemy. It all happened very quickly. We went right after him, though it was almost hopeless in that undergrowth. We were all dead tired, hardly able to stand. We'd almost reached our objective now, and we had to be in good shape for the last lap. It was good to get a halt. When we first sighted the objective, they were burning the undergrowth in front of the village. We settled down to watch, and the information we wanted was all there, easy to see. Jap before we made for home, 
for the sake of his papers. But it couldn't be a shooting job. So Knocker and the rest made a trap. A nasty contraption of spikes and bent bamboo, worked by a tripwire. We fixed it across a path that we'd seen them using. Sooner or later, one of them was bound to walk into it. Usually, you get away without trouble at times like this, but there's always the chance of having to fight your way out. We got ready to fight. It would soon be night. And there was nothing for us to do except to stay still and quiet and wait. So the patrol made hope. But there are others who will always remain in the jungle. The soldiers who are coming back will find a world of peace. But a world where the cool logic of life must still be argued out. A world with very few maps and few certain roads. They will remember how evil can be beaten in its own surroundings by men who kept calm and kept together.